Hello friends. Oh, it's spilling. Oh no. Thank you guys so much for joining me here at this spooky reading vlog. If you're not a fan of books and reading, still stick around because I'm going to be doing a lot of fun and spooky fall activities, as well as reading three different books. I've chosen the three books and I'll tell you about them in a minute, but also every day that I'm filming this, I have a bunch of activities that I put in this mug. I mean, I didn't like put, you know, like I wrote them on a paper and put them in the mug. And I will choose one every day. I'm really excited. How many times am I gonna say that? Okay, I need to stop saying I'm excited. Okay, so for the three books that I'll be reading, I have chosen Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. Probably my most, well, not my most anticipated, but a very highly anticipated book, Dracul by Dagger Stoker and J.D. Barker, and Blood and Honey by Shelby Mahorin, or Mahorin. The author name pronunciation anxiety is real. But before I choose what book to read and what activity I'm gonna do today, I got some book mail. So let's go check the mail and see what I got. So I got this novel called The Darkling Bride by Laura Anderson and I think I actually, I think I actually like ruined it a bit with the knife. Can you guys see that? I use massive knives to open my Amazon packages all the time just because like it makes me feel powerful. But I've never ruined a book. I've never heard a book, damaged it at all until today. So I might have to stick with like really small knives from now on. This is amazing so far. Right after the map in the beginning, there's a part here, it says part one, and it says, I am quite convinced that there is no doubt whatsoever that the events here described really took place, however unbelievable and incomprehensible they might appear at first sight. And this was said by Bram Stoker in Dracula, and it was taken from a recently discovered original preface, which was extracted prior to publication. I knew going into this that there's gonna be some stuff about Dracula like that wasn't able to be published when Dracula was published, because this is written by Dacker Stoker, which is Bram Stoker's great grand nephew, I think. It's just super interesting already so far, and it's really creepy. I feel like I should be reading this when it's rainy or foggy or stormy outside at night because that's totally the vibe that this is giving me. But next, I want to draw our little activity out of the mug so I can see what activity we're gonna do today, and then I'm going to dive some more into this. Okay, I got my little mug here of activities, so let's see which activity we will be doing today. Ghost photo shoot. You guys will see what I'm talking about. I need to grab a sheet and some glasses. I can't be the only one who hears you. Dear 
Boys falling down at the party Saddest little baby in the room Fears tell me fears don't get me started I Okay, so I have a reading update for you guys. I was up late into the wee hours of the night reading last night. I could not put the book down. Where is the book? Let's just pretend that I'm holding it. We don't need it. It's good. So, okay, here are my thoughts so far. It kind of feels like I'm reading a biography because the book is based on Bram Stoker. It's about Bram Stoker, a real person. And Dracula, uh, not real person. Or is he? From what I could tell in the beginning of the book and the preface basically says that some of these events are based on Bram Stoker's life and taken from his notes and diaries and journals when writing Dracula. But there are vampires. So I was up reading it last night like, vampires are real? With every page that I read, I am more convinced that vampires do exist or did exist. And that's why it's so fascinating to me. You know, there's a lot of weird stuff in this world that nobody knows anything about, that maybe only a few people have encountered or come across. And it's so easy to dismiss stuff that isn't scientifically proven, right? Because we like facts. But then there's kind of like this in-between area where like some people have had experiences with ghosts and spirits, but people don't believe in ghosts, right? Ghosts aren't real. But like, are they? Werewolves, vampires, who knows what's actually real? Because like, what if we haven't encountered it? Like the freaking Loch Ness Monster, I 100% believe in Nessie. Can't tell me Nessie isn't real. But when it comes to things like this, like ghosts and Dracula, I kind of like to believe more in it than to not believe in it. And I feel like it makes life more fun. I mean, how cool would life be if vampires were real, right? I mean, not really because they're actually evil, at least in this book. No nice vampires in this book so far. So essentially the story kind of takes place in the beginning we see Bram Stoker, he's locked up in this castle and he's trying to escape. That I think there's like a vampire outside the door. It's really spooky. But then we get taken back to the diary of Bram Stoker when he's younger. We start with him, I don't remember how old he is. He's like middle school age or younger than that. And then we kind of see him get older and older. So I think I actually might finish it tonight because I'm just whipping through the audiobook. But we need to draw the activity for today. So I'm gonna go grab the mug of activities. Okay, I don't even know what I want. Do I want the fall treat? Do I want pumpkin carving? I don't know. <gasps> Bake a fall treat. I know the best one. Let's go make it. I'm so excited. Turned about and made a 
Happy Wednesday. Last night I finished Drag Cool and let me tell ya, I had a hard time going to sleep because of the ending of this book and the author's note and just everything. Five stars. This is gonna be like one of my new favorite books of all time. I, I like, my mind is just all over the place and I couldn't write anything. So this is just gonna be me rambling for a few minutes about how much I love this book and the way that it blew my mind at the end. So if you just wanna skip this rambling, go for it. I like, okay, I don't know, how do I talk about this? Okay, how many times am I gonna say okay? Basically, I said this before, but Bram Stoker went to his publisher, put it on the table to his publisher and said, this book is true. And his publisher said, well, doesn't matter. We can't publish it because Jack the Ripper is going crazy and we can't publish a novel about vampires and cause more mass panic than's already happening. And so basically he made some revisions to the novel and he ended up letting his publisher publish it as a fictional novel. But here's the thing. He wanted to warn people of the danger of vampires and how to stay safe and he wanted to, people to know about them and their weaknesses and things just so that people could know. But since his publisher wanted it to be fictional, he decided that although he was sending it to this publisher, he could also send it to publishers around the world. And when he sent the manuscript to different publishers, he, uh, he left more pages in those copies. So essentially, a different copy was sent to Australia and Iceland and to Germany and the US. And what he did was kind of leave like a trail of breadcrumbs, little hints in all the different versions that kind of put together will tell the real story of the vampire Dracula. Also, the first editions that were published are the ones that have like more information in the preface at the beginning. Also, oh yeah, I forgot. There were originally a hundred more pages in the beginning that got cut out, but I think the first editions are the ones that still have these 100 pages, which is why they're like $30,000 on eBay. 
Well, what's blowing my mind is that like Bram Stoker was so convinced that vampires were real that he went through all the trouble to leave these breadcrumbs. He said that Van Helsing was actually a very popular and well-known doctor at the time and his personal friend, Bram Stoker's personal friend, but they changed his name obviously because he said that if people knew his real name, everybody would know who he really was. Like Van Helsing isn't some fictional character, it's based on his friend. Just all sorts of hints and clues in the author's note at the end. So if you read this and you don't read the author's note, you're missing out on a lot. Also in his notes, cause we see in here, there are like notes from Bram Stoker's actual diary and journal. Um, they have the coordinates. They ended up finding the coordinates to Dracula's castle, like the real Dracula. It also talks about how a lot of people think that Vlad the Impaler was who Dracula was kind of based after, but they disprove that in the author's note. Um, Dacker Stoker disproves that. Yes, here it says, Bram Stoker did not intend for Dracula to serve as fiction, but as a warning of a very real evil. Worried about the impact of presenting such a story as true, his editor pushed the manuscript brass back across the desk with a single line of his own. No. Says, at this point, Stoker nearly pulled the book knowing compromise would mean his message might get lost. But at the same time, he knew without it ever published, his, me his message wouldn't be seen at all. When the novel was finally published, the first 101 pages had been cut. Numerous alterations had been made to the text and the epilogue had been shortened, changing Dracula's ultimate fate as well as that of his castle. Tens of thousands of words had vanished. I love this part in the author's note where he says, with that, after the publishing happened and after the 100 pages had been removed, with that, a game began. No, with that began a game. <sighs> Dyslexia. With that began a game, a mystery we've only begun to unravel more than 120 years later. So Decker talked about how they recently found an Icelandic edition, like first edition, that has pages that have been missing from so many other editions. And like different elements to the story completely. This story wasn't just published widely, like these different editions have like different characters and well, like a lot of the same characters, but some different characters and a lot of different things that happen in the story. And I find that so fascinating. I am just mumbling and there's like no structure to this, but like, what? I want to go study Bram Stoker now and I want to go study vampires and I want to learn about freaking Dracula. Why are more people not talking about this? Also, supposedly one of the co-owners of Microsoft purchased this first the first edition, first US edition that was like $100,000 or something like that. And they invited the Stoker family to go read this manuscript and they had to all sign something like a disclosure thing that they would not talk about what was written in this book and that the information would not be given to the public, like all sorts of weird stuff about vampires. It was everything I could have hoped for. The ending was so, like there were so many twists and turns, but I can't really talk about what it's about because it gives so many spoilers away. Just know that it's about Bram Stoker's life and his encounter with the Dra with Dracula. I will say you don't need to read Dracula before reading this, but I would recommend reading Dracula first. Um, there are mentions of some of the characters in Dracula, some of the people, but like you could still read it without having read Dracula. Like if you wanna read this first and then read Dracula, you could do that. You would understand everything. So now I need to move on to my next book, Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I'm gonna go get dressed because I'm wearing my nightgown. I will see you guys in a few minutes. for the activity cup. So let's choose today's spooky activity. What's gonna be there? Only a few left. I dropped one, whoops. Put you back in there. Okay. <gasps> Watch scary movies. 
but because I'm me, I said watch classic scary movies because I can't watch like actual like adult scary movies because they're too scary for me. <laughs> Like I've tried to put on horror movies before and I just go back to watching like a Halloween episode of That's So Raven or Lizzie McGuire. It gives me like nostalgic spooky vibes rather than like I'm gonna go to sleep and pee my pants and be staring at my closet door all night. Like who wants that? I don't want that. So we're gonna do some classic spooky movies. What's a, what's a good classic spooky movie? One that's just a bit eerie and spooky and classic? I know. Oh, I just spilled them. It's fine. You guys are all fine. Okay. So it's not exactly a movie, but this is the best thing I could think of. I thought of classic, spooky. It can't be anything other than the Twilight Zone. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. But okay, maybe, maybe you guys aren't feeling the Twilight Zone. Search for Scooby-Doo Zombie Island. <laughs> so, Scooby-Doo is always a good idea, but there's another one that I thought of. It's one of my favorite. Search for The Others. So I just finished watching The Others and I did watch a bit more of Scooby-Doo as well. But I wanted to take a few minutes and share with you my favorite Twilight Zone episode. Because as I was watching these, I was thinking about how or how many younger people who didn't watch it back when it was really popular have actually seen it. And I absolutely adore the series. I thought that I would share my top five with you guys. So, okay, first one I'm gonna go with is The Monsters Are Due on Maple Street. This is one of the most iconic and classic episodes out of all of the like 140 or however many episodes there are. It's basically about this neighborhood and the suburbs, you know, all of the families know each other. And one day there's like this shadowy, like they think maybe aliens have landed or that there's like this being that has like moved into the neighborhood, but nobody knows who or where it might be. So you get to see all this interaction and tension build of these neighbors trying to figure out where the monster is or where the alien is. There's a twist at the end. It's just absolutely fantastic. Next is an episode that I only just recently watched and it's called Will the Real Martian Please Stand Up? This one is a mix between Agatha Christie and some sci-fi put together. It's about these people who were on a bus, they go into a cafe, it's snowing and cold outside and they're drinking some coffee and they realize that there were six people on the bus but now there are seven people in the cafe and they all went in together and there was nobody in the cafe when they first went in. And these police officers are also around this cafe and they were told about a UFO that they had seen flying around and that possibly landed nearby. So then Rob Sterling comes on and he's like, okay, you're gonna play detective with these police officers and it's up to you to figure out which one of these seven people is the Martian that just landed from the UFO and they all look normal everything's normal and you have to try and put some clues together and figure out who it is and it's so good my Agatha Christie loving soul absolutely loved this episode next my third favorite is gonna have to be probably the most iconic episode which is the eye of the beholder about this woman who is in a hospital. She's getting some work done on her face. I, I can't, I, just, I can't say anymore. This episode, you just need to watch without knowing what it's about. And the twist at the end. This is like one of the biggest twists, I guess, like in all the episodes. This twist just like blew my mind. So go watch it. And then my fourth favorite is gonna have to be, this one is so scary, Living Doll. So basically before there was Chucky, there was Talkie Tina. If you are terrified of dolls and creepy toys, um, you need to watch this episode, it'll freak you out. The doll is evil and this guy is trying to tell his family like, hey, our daughter's doll is possessed and alive and of course they don't believe him and the way that it haunts him 
and the way that it like kind of comes after him is so creepy. And then my fifth favorite, and it's another one of the most iconic episodes, is Five Characters in Search of an Exit. This one's ending always kind of stuck with me. If you've never watched The Twilight Zone, then you don't know, but basically at the ending of every episode, there's this twist. So the twist at this one, I just have always thought about it. So it starts with, there are five people. There's like a ballerina, an astronaut, like totally random ragtag group of people. And they're in this kind of bizarre and strange setting and they don't know why they're there. They don't know what's going on. They just kind of wake up and they're there and we follow them as they figure out where they are, who they are, what they're supposed to be doing, and yeah, like I said, the twist at the end. So good. <sighs> so I think I'm going to finish this book. I've been reading it, and I was actually reading it a bit when I was watching The Others because I had seen that movie many times. So I'll let you guys know what I think when I finish it. by something then I feel I feel safe safe down here this is actually quite cozy I know why dogs kind of like to you know have like a little cave Okay, I just finished it. Oh, this was so good. Okay, that ending gave me goosebumps. It was so good. I need some tea. It is cold today. Thursday. I think it's Thursday today. Happy Thursday! I'm harnessing my inner Taylor Swift this morning. Can you guys tell? Oh, I should go grab my cardigan. Now, the look is complete. Today, I will be starting Blood and Honey. This is the sequel to Serpent and Dove, which was one of my favorite books that I read last year. It had witches and like the historical fiction fantasy type vibe set in a fictional France. It was just so good. But before I get to reading, it is that time of day. We're gonna figure out what activity I'm going to be doing. What is it? Oh, I'm so excited for this one. You guys see that? Is it too bright? Well, anyway, it says make a reading fort in the mountains. There's nothing I like more than going out in the mountains. If you've seen some of my other videos, like my morning routine usually includes some frolicking of some sort. I feel the most at home and most at peace when I'm in the mountains. All right, time to go on an adventure. Let's go. Welcome to my mini forest castle.
just wanted to say good night to you guys. I won't be giving an update for this book. I started it and I just wasn't loving it, so I'm gonna finish it another time. But if you made it to the end of this video and you happen to be watching this the day that I posted it, I would love to know what your plans are for Halloween tonight. I will be watching scary movies and stuffing my face with candy and carving pumpkins. Anyway, I hope you are having a great morning or evening, wherever you are, whenever you're watching this, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!